everybody. I hope you are healthy and uh, in self-quarantine and practicing social distancing and washing your hands for 20 seconds and getting into those little crevices and behind your ring and under your fingernails. Those are disgusting. I hope you're not touching your face. Um, I hope that uh, you're getting lots of fresh air because you can still go outside and take walks. I have my windows open here if you're wondering what the curtain is. We're trying to keep a lot of air in the house. I'm with my mom here at my grandparents' house in Arizona. Um, we're very lucky that we have this space. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today, but actually before, <laughs> let me, I have to be a good host. Uh, if you're not subscribing, please click subscribe and share this. We are trying to get to 100,000 subscriptions in the next six weeks because then we can monetize and, uh, you know, build a little bit of a studio and provide more content to you. I would like to bring on extra help so we can make these videos uh, crisper and, and uploaded right away and put more on Patreon earlier, patreon.com slash the Nomi Key Show. Uh, it'll take, you know, a little bit of financial backing, uh, crowdsource to help us build a little bit of a studio. Very, very, very uh, simple studio. But I want to thank you all for joining us and for subscribing and sharing. Uh, this is... This has been an, a crazy time to launch a show, I'll say that. <laughs> but thank God we have technology that allows us to do this. Um, I'm in Arizona, and today is the primary date in Arizona. Arizona did not cancel its primary. It did not postpone its primary. It is a presidential primary. It is not the congressional primary, which takes place in August. And I, uh, you know, I, I was vocal about this last night on Twitter. I received a text message Somehow I'm a New York voter, but I received a text message saying that people, uh, because of the COVID epidemic or, the, or, or pandemic, we um, polling sites are changing. And that really concerned me because, you know, this is what happened in California. They went through all these reforms and people who've been going to the same polling sites every single year uh, for how many years suddenly had had a new polling site to go to, a precinct site. So they did that in Arizona. Um, it wasn't very clear about how it was gonna work. I guess in, in Maricopa County, at least in, in Phoenix, uh, you could go to any site and, and vote. And we just uploaded a video on YouTube where I talked to a friend of mine who's a teacher in Arizona who, who shared a, a picture of him voting for Bernie. And I said, I would love to hear about your experience because you know he has kids, he's a teacher, he's, um, he's doing a lot right now. It's spring break. So if you haven't checked that out, it's it's up on YouTube right now, uh, also on Patreon. But I want to talk about Tom Perez because in my mind, the buck stops at Tom Perez. You know, this is a man who likes to use process when he wants to appear to be democratic, but at the end of the day can, can make a decision on behalf of the entire elected DNC membership and all of the appointed members. Uh, really on a moment's notice by by signing essentially a decree. He doesn't sign anything, he just decides. He decided the debate schedule, he decided the types of debates, the format of the debates, the candidates had no say when usually they do. And, um, and he really is there to enforce something. And I think what we saw in the last 24 hours coming from him was criminal. He went on Chris Hayes last night and said that he trusted the states to manage this. Well, Many states decided, including Ohio, to cancel their primaries uh, indefinitely, you know, postponing for a certain date. There was a lot of back and forth, but ultimately it came down to not being a legislative issue and changing the dates because that's where the process can get confusing. I'll get to that in a second. But it came down to a health crisis. Now, last night I, I posted my the text I received and I said, this is, you know, disheartening. Uh, there are... are are millions of elderly here. There are, there are retirement cities all around Arizona. Uh, you're putting millions of people at risk, not just the millions of voters, but the people who they contact. You know, we all know, we all understand now that young people are carriers. We all understand that the, 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 the microorganisms can sit on, a, on certain um, surfaces for several hours and maybe even a couple of days, depending on the surface. We all know the risks here. And yet Tom Perez went on air yesterday and said he trusts, even with pushback. So I, I tweeted something and my friend, um, really he's my friend, I've known him for many years since I, I organized in Arizona in like 2006. Uh, Ruben Gallego, he's a congressman and his ex-wife is the mayor of Phoenix. 
um, but although she didn't chime in, I, I had to make that clear. He said uh, that 80% of Arizona voters have voted by mail. And he also said that the Maricopa County official who's overseeing it uh, at the, the largest site is um, a Bernie supporter. Like that matters. Actually evidence historically shows that when you change election dates like this for some reason um, and you vote by mail, it's actually more of a cost to educate people about this and it doesn't usually help grassroots voters. It actually helps the establishment more. I don't know how that plays out for the for the presidential primary because Bernie Sanders does have a very engaged uh, voting block and, and highly informed voting block. Um, but, you know, it's concerning that they are putting their politics, explicitly their politics, by bringing politics into the conversation ahead of the lives and the health of communities. Because this isn't just about the voters who go to those sites who are at risk, but it's about the people they come in contact with. We know how this works now, right? We're all educating ourselves and changing our lifestyles. And when I interviewed my friend um, Ted, who's in the, 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 uh, the, you can see the interview, I just went up about, you know, maybe an hour ago. Uh, he said that he had to use touch screens and that there were people from the community that are, are high risk at the polling sites handling the ID card because you have to show your license. Who knows what's on that license and if it's been disinfected and then handing you a touch screen uh, because they're using the touch screen. I don't know if it's to vote or if it's to process like who's being registered. So I don't know how often it's being, dis you know, everything's being disinfected. Um, I really think even if 80% have already voted by mail, that 20%, if you get to that point of expected voters, are at risk. And coming from New York, where we're pretty much under lockdown, as San Francisco is right now, to come to Arizona and see such negligence from the Democrats is, is despicable. And this is not going to be reflected well in history if we... <laughs> continue as a human race. Um, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm kidding. I think Tom Perez um, needs to be held accountable. This isn't about resigning anymore. He's putting millions of people at risk. And to use uh, the excuse that, you know, it needs to go through state legislature, that's bullshit. I was on the Unity Reform Commission. And yes, we, we said to change your electoral process, yes, it does have to go through the legislatures. If a state wants to be a caucus instead of a primary or, or a primary instead of a caucus, it has to go through the legislatures and that's a long process. But we saw many states have their governors decide by signing off, they can override the legislature. And aside from that, this is a health issue. There's precedent here that it's a health issue, that the date can be changed. But oh no, no, it gets, it gets worse. The DNC then said today that they would punish states that decided to postpone their primaries past June. They'd punish their delegates. Now, let me be clear. Those types of decisions have had to go through extraordinary processes in the past with the DNC. We, had, we deliberated uh, uh, punishing states and their delegates on the Unity Reform Commission, which lasted almost two years. Then it had to go to the Rules Committee, which I don't know how, how many times they met, uh, probably for another six months or a year because they don't have meetings that often. And then it had to go before the entire DNC body. But oh, no, no, Tom Perez just made the decision on his own. I, they are putting millions of people at risk. My mother is, has, is compromised. She has an immune system issue right now. And, you know, we are going, we've restructured our lives so that like I'm working in another room and we can't even touch each other while we're in the same house. We're airing everything out and I'm still worried. And then to be able then to see that they're elderly still going to grocery stores here because the public information is not out there. I mean, it is a red state. I don't know if people are watching some news and not other news and Fox News has, has not fully been uh, uh, on top of this issue as we've seen and the president has not been on top of this issue. I don't know why the Democratic Party, Arizona Democratic Party, hasn't even issued guidelines. I saw a tweet here and there, but you know, this should be via text. They should be warning people about the risks. But it is absolutely disgusting and inhumane and criminal that Tom Perez is saying, and, and prior to this, let's not forget, they were saying that everybody was calling to postpone the primaries, 
which I think is against their own interest, actually, political interest. There is a crew of folks led by Neera Tandon, once again, saying that it was voter suppression. Let me tell you something. The grassroots doesn't do voter suppression. You are the ones who control everything. You control the primary process. It's a private process that you write the rules for. You interpret the rules. And you are now putting millions of people at risk. And thank you to those who voted by mail. But there are still some folks like myself who like to go to the polls. I like the experience. But I live in New York. And now New York is discussing postponing their primary process to June when they have their congressional primary. Which also affects races for uh, grassroots candidates who are running for Congress because suddenly more resources by the establishment party are being put into educating uh, voters and uh, you know having these off cycle actually sometimes benefited grassroots candidates to run against the you know the machine that's the same thing in Georgia right now so I don't know what the answer is at this point other than accountability for Tom Perez um, stepping down not stepping down, uh, I mean, stepping down would be good because we, we uh, even if they replaced him with some, somebody else, I, I don't know. I mean, I think DNC members need to step up, those DNC members who've criticized him in the past but maybe have voted for him. It's time for them to step up. This is that moment in history. I don't use the, the word criminal lightly. Um, I think that they're misinforming folks they're uh, neglecting the responsibilities and duties. And, um, you know, this is a health crisis. This is a pandemic. I'm, I'm really disgusted in the Democratic Party leadership right now. I'm disgusted. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed to be a Democrat at this moment. And you can cut that up and you can slice it however you want because I know that's what you're going to do. Haters. But Tom Perez, for whatever his motivations are, is putting millions of people at risk. And uh, he should not be, be allowed to get away with this. And in the past, let's keep in mind, in the past, they kind of let these storms like play out. You know, he gets a lot of bad press and they just let it play out, let it play out. They let the activists get it out of their system and then move on to the next story. This is why we have to be very strategic. I think that the DNC, the convention's probably gonna be canceled, I don't know for sure. Um, but I think it would be highly inappropriate and irresponsible. And frankly, what kind of message does that send to voters? You know, you're talking about being the responsible ones. Biden is talking about being the calm in the storm. What kind of leadership is that? You know, I have criticized Andrew Cuomo, Cuomo, <laughs> Andrew Cuomo ad nauseum. But I've got to say, in moments of crisis, and I've seen him do this before, he really rises to the equa equa equation. I'm losing my words. Andrew Cuomo will immediately, uh, even though his mind is so political, in those extreme moments, whether it's Sandy or this situation, um, he really has pulled aside his politics. And, you know, I'm, I have campaigned tirelessly against Andrew Cuomo and the IDC. I've <laughs> done a lot of research on Andrew Cuomo. Uh, I don't think that Tom Perez and many Democrats, including Joe Biden, are bringing the type of, of leadership needed. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is really bad, guys. Uh, we have to push back. So I'm, I'm looking at some of the questions. Uh, you know, I think that they're really scared of Bernie Sanders, of course, and and polls tightening and they don't really know where the voter the electorate is right now in the face of this crisis and they want to they want to close out this primary while biden uh is ahead you know he isn't ahead by a ton in terms of delegates but you know he has the momentum clearly and he has he has a lot of the establishment support but you are seeing many people in the media push back because you know they're younger and they're afraid for their futures i mean i really think that's what it comes down to so be safe Stay healthy, social distancing. Uh, I am going to do all my best to produce more content because I have more time on my hands. I just realized how much time we save uh, by not commuting. <laughs> I, I lose so much time commuting uh, during, during the day. Um, but I appreciate you all. And to you haters out there, you know what? 
you can play politics all day long and you can smear and you can say all the things in the comments that you want, but at the end of the day, Steve M, <laughs> specifically, um, it takes a lot of courage for people to rise up and speak out on behalf of their communities. And, you know, we need an engaged electorate and we need people who don't sit on the sidelines and who speak up for their communities and challenge authority. And you can sit there and you can attack others who are out there, but it's those who get in the arena. And all of you are in the arena and you're fighting and you're speaking out and you're challenging authority and you're challenging the status quo because at the end of the day, it's about human lives. That is what is on the line here. If you are spending your time right now smearing and attacking and playing politics, I don't know where your priorities are. People are literally dying. We don't have enough hospital beds. We don't have enough masks and, and hazmat suits for our medical community. If you're too busy online smearing people and being a troll, you got a real problem. You got a real problem. And for those political um, uh, voices, you know, who have huge platforms on Twitter right now playing politics, shame, shame on you. This is about human lives and courage. And this is the time you call out those in power. If you've never done it before, this is the time you use your platform and you make phone calls and you call your grandma and your grandpa and your parents and your aunties and your uncles and you tell them what's on the line here and you speak to them from empathy and you meet them where they are. This is what matters right now, not this other stuff. All right, I love you all. Uh, I appreciate your work and uh, just keep up, you know, stay healthy and um, stay safe. Thanks.